YouTube fam, what's up? It's Patrick. Welcome to another weekly practice session. So good to always share space with each and every one of you. Before we begin, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We have new classes coming every week. If you enjoyed this session, hit the like button. Let me know how it went in the comments. Uh, for this vinyasa flow today, all you'll need is yourself and your mat. Let's go ahead and begin in child's pose. Allow your hips to sit back in space just a little. Maybe try to snuggle your front hip points down towards the tops of your legs a bit. Anytime I come into child's pose, I always like to just bounce around, find a little rhythm to moving forwards and backwards. And maybe that's something that you enjoy too. Or maybe you like to settle into one particular space or another. It's really good either way. It's all about just recognizing how you feel and where you want to be. What helps you feel settled? What's, what helps you feel connected? What helps you enter your practice space? Move away from whatever you are doing before and come into... Now, come into this moment. Go ahead and pull forwards on the hands and knees when you're ready. Drive down into the thumbs and then circle the shoulders over the wrists a few times. Going clockwise, going counterclockwise, getting into the base of your hands just a bit. And when you feel central and ready in the hands, tuck the toes and lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. As you get there, treat your feet the same way. So bend your knees. And straighten your legs, roll to the inner and outer edges of both feet. Just kind of bounce around a bit. Find a nice little rhythm, find a nice little groove that helps you move from spot to spot. Allowing you to connect in this space, allowing you to breathe, allowing you to actualize the current position. As always, anytime you step onto the mat, the shape you're in is different, even if you've practiced it thousands or millions of times before. Go ahead and find your downward facing dog. Make everything nice and static for just a moment. And then inhale, wave forwards into plank pose. Drive into the thumbs, look forward, cur curve your collarbones out slightly. And then roll back into downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forwards into plank pose. And exhale, curve back into downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forwards into plank pose. And exhale, curve back into downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up, and on your exhale, step your right foot to the outside of the right hand. Let your left knee drop, twist and reach your right arm up to the sky, peel your chest open. Let your left collarbone see something new. On your exhale, right hand to floor, modified pyramid pose, push your hips up and away. Bend your right knee, drop your left heel down, and then peel your left hand up to the sky. Kind of a wide variation of side angle, stretching through your left hand. On your exhale, left hand to floor. Lift your right leg up and back in space. Big stretch through the right leg. Hold here, lift your left hand up by your left hip. Flirt with the instability of it. Inhale here, and then exhale, bring your right knee up to right tricep. Left hand can find the floor anytime you want, anytime you need it to. Maybe try to hug your right knee to the inside of your right leg. Then plant your left hand down, swing your right knee wide, take a push up. Roll to the outer edge of your left foot. Step your right foot over and behind your left knee. Root down through your right big toe and try to bring your left big toe to the floor as you reach your right arm overhead. On your exhale, close. Everything off, downward, facing dog. Inhale, your left leg lifts. And on your exhale, take your left foot to the outside of the left hand. As it lands, drop your right knee down. Inhale, twist and reach. Your left arm up to the sky. Right collarbone looks to see something new. On your exhale, left hand to the floor. Push your hips up and back. Try to fold to the inner line of your left leg. Bend your left knee, drop your right heel, and then use your inhale to peel your right collarbone open. Your right hand reaches up to the sky. Wider variation of side angle. On your exhale, right hand to the floor. Left leg lifts up and back, three-legged dog. Option to make it a two-legged dog by lifting your right hand up by your right hip, or even just staying on your right fingertips. The key here is to really challenge the position. Notice how I'm wobbling in it a little bit, even using my right hand for support by the right foot. Don't just sit in a place where you feel balanced. Sit in a place where you feel active. Take one inhale here. On your exhale, drive your left knee forward to the inside of your left tricep or onto your left tricep. Option, of course, have your right hand on the floor. Take a moment here, really work through the activation, work through the connection. And then bring your right hand to the floor. Swing your left knee wide. Take a push up. As you rise to plank, roll to the outer edge of your right foot. Left foot steps behind right knee. Push 
down through the hip, stretching your left arm up and overhead, creating space, finding a little bit of length there, a little bit of opening. On your exhale, return to center, downward facing dog. Inhale, wave forwards into your plank pose, fine. Top of the push-up position, take your inhale. On your exhale, slowly lower to the floor in five, four, three, two, on one. You land. Open your left arm up like a T. Step your right foot over your left hip, peeling your chest up to the sky. Breathing in here. Creating space. Try to have a long spine in this moment. One more inhale. On your exhale, release and return to center. Swing over to the other side. Your right arm is out straight. As you roll onto your right shoulder, your left foot steps over and behind. Your right leg, again, work towards a straight spine here. Get longer through the top of the skull. Push into your left big toe. Find a nice, easy, available breath. Find the lines of tension in your body. Move through them, breathe through them. Slowly return to center. As your hips ground into the floor, set yourself up for oscillating cobra pose. Fingertips at 10 and 2, push down, inhale, lift your chest up. And exhale, roll down. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, roll down. Two more here. Find your rhythm. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, lower. Set your hands for upward facing dog. Inhale, lift yourself. Push through the palms, push through the tops of the feet. Really try to pull your chest forward, creating some space. Rooting through your thumbs. Finding some length. And then bend your elbows, lower your hips back down to the floor. Lift your feet off the ground, squeeze your shoulder blades together as you stretch through your back toes. Lift your hands off the ground. Stay long through your fingers. Find the back body alive, electric, active. Release. Place your hands on the ground, your journey back into downward facing dog. Set yourself up. Move with some freedom to make that possible, whether that's through child's pose, through push-up, through hands and knees. You have a plethora of options there for you. Now that your body feels a bit more alive, a bit more alert, and a bit more awake, drive into the palms. Look forwards. Lift heels, bend knees, bottom of your exhale. Go ahead and step or float feet to the outsides of your hands. Inhale, active squat. We'll take two rounds of awakening A here. Exhale, straighten legs, hands to heart. Inhale, reach hands up to sky. Exhale, sit, your hips down. Inhale, hands to the floor, elbows bend, vinyasa. Find control, connection, power every step of the way. And give yourself the freedom to notice the different physical awareness that comes into your body in each space. As you get here, look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Bottom of exhale, step or float feet to the outsides of your hands. Landing as lightly as possible, however you get there. Inhale, rise, active squat. Push the knees forward. Exhale, straighten legs, hands the heart center. Inhale, reach hands up to sky. Exhale, sit, your hips down. Inhale, hands to the floor, elbows bent. Vinyasa. Wonderful work. Root into the hands as you make it back to downward facing dog. Notice how you have more lift through the tailbone, more length through your lower back. Take an inhale. Look forward, lift heels, bend knees. Bottom of exhale, step or float feet to thumbs. Landing as lightly as possible. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your hands up to the sky. Get longer. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, stretch your hands up. And exhale, fold down. Inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, hands to the floor, left foot steps to the back of the mat. Roll to the outer edge of your right foot. Really pull your right knee wider here. Keep your left hip lifted. Keep your left knee lifted for a moment. See if you can use the outer line of your leg, like your glute, to really externally rotate your right femur. So it's as if you're prepping in towards a pigeon pose here for just a moment. You're really creating some space. And then drop your right big toe down to the floor. Drop your left knee down. It follows the heel. Backstroke through your right arm. Reach it towards your left heel. Hold here. Squeeze left heel to butt. Catch the outer edge of your left foot. Take an inhale here and then kick your left heel, your left ankle into your right hand. As you do that, use your next inhale to breathe into your right shoulder to create space. See if you can keep the consistency of pushing your left foot into your right hand, no matter your breathing pattern. But every inhale, I want you to take it to the inner line of your right shoulder blade and just peel open a bit more. Exhale, release. Straighten through your right leg, push your hips back in space, Ardha Hanuman, half splits. As you come into your half splits, take a twist today, so fingers to outside of right foot. Push your left hip back in space and really drive your right heel down into the floor. See if it helps you pull your tailbone back. You can also wiggle your left hand up towards the top right corner of the mat. Bend your right knee, twist back to center. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee off the ground. Place your right hand out in front of you and then wheel yourself open into Ardha Chandras in a half moon pose. Now you're standing on just your right foot. Your right hand can of course leave the floor, but it's always nice to have that marker to help you stabilize the entry into the shape. Where you can stay here or you can work on this twisting motion. So inhale from here and then on your exhale, you're gonna roll the left hip down to try to touch the inner line of the right leg and then peel back open. One, we have a total of five of those. Roll down, work with control, peel open. Two, roll down, peel open. Three, for those of you holding, stick with it, you're doing wonderful. Roll down, this is number four. If you lose your balance, great, it's part of the game. Peel open, four, last one. Roll down, peel open, five. Bend your right knee, left foot steps to the back of the mat, inhale. Exhale, sink into your right knee, warrior two, open your arms. Big inhale here, and exhale, straighten your right leg. Let all toes pivot left, take an inhale. On your exhale, fold down to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. We have two more of those here. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. This time, plant your left palm flat on the floor. Rise onto your right big toes. Your left knee comes to touch. Your left tricep Hold here for five, four, three, two. On one, stretch the left foot towards the top of the mat, kicking it out, kicking it out, kicking it out and then sit your bum just behind your right heel. Take the right foot to the inside of the left leg. Inhale here. Exhale, fold over your left shin, Janushir Shasana. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, fold down. Find the moments and the elements of stillness along this journey. Notice the levels of subtle Challenge, subtle such a funny word when you're thinking about challenge, but there's like, there's moments of really pushing yourself physically in this class if you want them, but they're not required at all. So don't feel that pressure. This is a space for exploration. And if achievement comes with that in your mind, then great. But achievement is being here. Achievement is being part of the experience, being tuned in. Inhale, lift out of your Janu Shishasana, straighten your right leg out to meet your left. Inhale, lift your chest. Exhale, fold down. Plant your hands behind your knees in front of your hips. Push your hands down. Push your feet down. Lift your hips up. Pull your feet back towards your fingertips. Hold for five, four, three, two, on one. Lower down. 
Bring your hands behind your back, fingers point away from you, feet step close. Drive through your heels, bridge your hips up, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Long through the front line of the body, elevating your space. And then slowly sit back down. From here, pull your right knee into your chest. Have it nice and tight. Push through your right big toe, left hand towards its position that you had it in wide leg forward fold, and then step yourself right back there. Left knee can touch left tricep, of course, and then it lands. Walk your hands towards your front right foot. Take your right knee as far forward as possible. Keep your left knee lifted and try to drop your forearms down towards the floor. Snuggle into this space. Find an easy breath. Find a calm, consistent vibe. Really try to lift up through the back of your left knee, elevating your tailbone towards the sky. And then walk your hands back underneath your right shoulder. Step back to plank pose. From your plank, hold or optional vinyasa. And then we will meet back in downward facing dog to go through the other side. So root into your hands here, drive through your thumbs. Look forward, lift heels, bend knees. You're gonna step or float the feet to your thumbs. Landing as lightly as possible. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch your hands up to the sky, get long and tall. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, stretch up. Breathe into a more available space. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step your right foot back long. As you get there, pull your left knee wide and down. So you're really working through your glute here. You're staying stable in your left ankle to the best of your ability. And use your breath to get longer in your torso. One thing that we do often in this practice is use the breath to support us, use the breath to focus us, to nourish us. But you can really use your breath physically to lengthen you. And that physical connection is going to make all the other parts um, more available to you because you notice physical shift much more naturally. One more inhale here. On your exhale, drop your left big toe down. Your right knee follows. Backstroke through your left arm. Peel yourself open in space. Reach back and catch the outside of your right ankle. You can squeeze the heel to the butt. You can kick and then inhale, curve. Your right collarbone up to the sky. Remember to breathe to the inside of your left shoulder blade. Try to be consistent with the kick in your right foot, no matter how close your heel is to your butt. And if you can't catch the foot with your left hand, just squeeze your right heel towards your butt. That is plenty, and trust me, you are doing the work if you are there. One more inhale. On your exhale, release. Ardha Hanuman, your half splits. Push your hips back in space. Fold over your left shin, fingertips to outside of left leg. If you choose, adding in the twist to your half splits. Feel connected to this space. Like maybe you're focusing on your left pinky toe, pulling back towards your hip. Maybe you're trying to get a little longer, really fold over your left shin. So much of this is available. So much of this is about you being present and connected to it. So give yourself space. Give yourself freedom to explore, to tune in, to be part of your experience. Slowly return to center, bend your left knee, pull yourself forward, really get active in your left heel. As you lift your right knee up, place your left hand out in front of your left foot and then roll open into half moon pose. So you're using the left hand as a marker of sorts to help you create this range. Wherever you are here, try to stay long behind your right knee. You can of course hold or work this stability challenge, rolling the right hip down to the inside of the left leg as deep as you can go and then rolling out. We have a total of five here. Rolling down, rolling out. Work your stability, you're doing wonderful, that's two. Rolling down, rolling out, three. Rolling down, rolling out, that's four. 
rolling down, rolling out. That's five. Wonderful. Everybody bend your left knee. Gently step your right foot to the back of the mat. Inhale here. Exhale, sink deeper into your left knee, warrior two. Big inhale from this position. Exhale, straighten your left leg. All toes point right. Take an inhale. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Plant your right hand down. Stretch your left hand forward. Right knee to right tricep as you rise onto left big toe. Hold for five, four, three, two, on one. Kick your right foot towards the top right corner of the mat. Stay on your left big toe. Feel the pivot. Feel the reach through your right foot. Try to stay long and low here. And then sit your hips down to the floor. Let your right leg stay long. Left foot goes to the inside of your right leg. Big inhale. On your exhale, fold over your right leg. Breathe into some of the softer space here. Find the ability to be centered, to be calm, to be connected. I know that you don't really need to rush your process at all here. Just enjoy where you are. Use this moment of softness, this moment of stillness, especially if you are working those half moon rolling down and up, I guess is kind of what we're doing today, but it's really just working your internal external rotation in, in a sense. And also notice how your left leg feels in this Janushir Shasana. It should feel much better, much more available. Inhale, rise out of the shape. Stretch your left leg forward. Plant your hands to the outsides of your hips. Inhale, lift your chest up. Exhale, fold. From wherever your hands are here, scoot them about two to three inches further forward, closer to your knees, just as long as the fingers are behind the front line of the knees. Pull your toes back towards your face. Take an inhale. Exhale, push your hands down, push your feet down, pull your feet back in space, and then maybe you lift them off the ground. You're here for five, four, three, two, on one. Lower. Wonderful job. Pull your left knee back into your chest. Root into your left big toe. Your right hand steps to that space where it was for wide leg forward fold. And then you push off your left foot. Right knee journeys to right tricep. And right foot steps to the back of the mat. Take an inhale here. On your exhale, wiggle yourself forward to your front left foot. You can walk your hands further out if you choose. You can drop your forearms to the floor if that feels good to you today. Wherever you choose to go, I just really want you to pay attention to your right leg. Give your right leg some action. Give it some energy. Let currency flow from your big toe all the way through the back line of the body. And one thing you can think about here that may be helpful is trying to take your right heel to the floor. In this position, I know that seems next to impossible, but that level of push and attention is really going to help you create a ton of space. One more inhale here. On your exhale, place your hands back underneath your shoulders. Step back to plank pose. Take your inhale. On your exhale, move through your push-up. Knees and forearms drop. Inhale, pull through upward facing dock. Curve your heart out. Exhale, wave back downward facing dog. As you find downward facing dog, inhale, lift your right leg up to the sky. On your exhale, take your right shin forward to the top of the mat. Upright pigeon pose. We worked into the hips a lot today. We will continue that trend here. Stay upright for the first few breaths. Let your right leg feel heavy towards the floor. And then let that feeling, that sensation permeate over to your left hip. Allow your chest to really elevate here. Allow your hips to sink down just a bit more. Deep inhale here. Keep your fingertips on the floor if you need them for support. We're going to lift and lower in and out of this pigeon pose. So on your exhales, you fold. Try to have your chin or forehead touch the floor. Inhales, you rise. It's one. Lower. Rise. 
Two, lower. Rise. Three, lower. Rise. Four, lower. Rise. Five, you don't need to use the hands if you don't want to. Lower. Rise. Six, lower. Rise. Seven, lower. Rise. Eight, lower. Rise. Nine, lower. Rise, reach your hands up to the sky. Get longer, get longer, get longer. Palms to floor. Left toes tuck, three-legged dog. Right leg lifts all the way. Up and back in space. Roll to the outer edge of your left foot. Step the right foot over and behind. Bend your knees. And then drive through your heels. Peel yourself open. Your wild thing. Ord Badan, your asana. Whatever feels good to you here. Again, we haven't worked through the shoulders or spine as much. So you're more using this as a pose of freedom, a pose of exploration. And hopefully you're feeling a good push through your legs. On your exhale, close everything off. Downward facing dog. Inhale, your left leg lifts. On your exhale, left shin comes forward to the top of the mat. Pigeon pose. Again, we're working that active position. So take a moment to set yourself up in space. I know these are challenging, but honestly, this is where you make the biggest physical shift in your body because you're actually requiring something of yourself in these places. So often we stay dormant when we can really be present or active or exploratory. And of course, that applies so much off the mat as well. Like where do you see yourself as being complacent in this moment and how can you, you know, play with time differently or shift things around a bit? Either way, let's get into our folds so you can be about the action of this current moment. Inhale lifts you, so exhale folds you down. Chin or forehead touches, inhale rise. Fingers can of course support you, that's one, lower. Lift, two, lower. Lift, three, lower. Lift, four, lower. Lift, five, lower. Lift, six, lower. Lift, seven, lower. Lift, eight, lower. Lift, nine, lower. Lift, on 10, reach your hands up to the sky, get longer, get taller, let the pose be more available, more connected. On your exhale, palms to the floor. Tuck your right toes, three-legged dog. Your left leg stretches into new space and territory as you move over to the outside of your right leg. Push through your feet, elevate your hips, your wild thing. your Rasana, Kamakrasana. And again, feel your hips here. We haven't moved as much through the spine. That's not going to be as available in this mode. Feel your hips, feel your legs, feel all of that. So rooted, so connected to this moment in the practice. And then exhale, close. Everything off. Downward facing dog. Keep your toes tucked. Look forward. Bend your knees. Bend your elbows. Pull yourself through into upward facing dog. And then exhale, cruise back. Downward facing dog. Look forward to the space at the top of the mat. You're going to step or float through to find your way. Laying flat on the ground. One more. Active pose today. As you find your way onto your back body, set up for bridge or wheel. And again, if you feel like Ord Vedanyarasana is your game, by all means, take it. If you'd rather play into bridge, go there too. I'll cue bridge into wheel. Fingertips touch backs of Achilles tendon. Make your arms robot arms, so 90 degree angles, fingers pointing up towards the sky. Take an inhale here, preparing. On your exhale, push heels and triceps down into the floor, lifting your chest. Then from here, use your inhale to pull your heart back towards your chin. Notice how this stretches and lengthens the front line of your body. 
Stay here, stay stable. If you're living in bridge pose, bind the hands, drive that bind down into the floor or place your palms flat on the ground to create more force. If you're taking Urdhva place hands by ears, fingers pointing away from you, and drive to rise. Notice the space you prefer in this moment, in this practice. We've moved through your full body during this session today. Notice what's showing up for you. You're here for five, four, three, two, on one. Let it go. Let it go. Land flat, lay flat. Allow your body to just melt in this very neutral space. Maybe you wiggle the feet wide, let the knees drop middle. You can always bring one hand to heart, one hand to belly. Let your eyes softly close. Feel breath moving through you here. Feel energy and currency waving up and down your physical system. Notice the shift in your energy. Notice the shift in yourself. Acknowledge that here. Acknowledge that. How do you feel in this moment? What do you have gratitude for? It can be something as simple as taking this time for yourself. It can be something more involved, more personal, more complicated. You know, maybe at minute seven, you felt like quitting, but you're still here now. That's perseverance. That's mental toughness. That's fortitude. That's so many, you know, your, your capability to overcome. It was strong in this moment. Appreciate it. Maybe this class was smooth and rhythmic and every, all the pieces fit together. Have gratitude for that. Like every journey on the mat, it's always different. It's always personal. If you need a closing pose, a wonderful one here would be plow pose, reaching your feet up and over your head, lengthening the back line of the body, creating a shelter for yourself, a physical fortress, if you will, to contain your state of being, to contain the moment, to allow yourself to live within it for just a little bit longer, and to do so with less external stimulation. No matter where you are, you're in a room, there's things in the room, there's lights in the room, there's potentially people, pets, kids in the room. So, you know, the plow pose really allows us the chance to create a fortress for ourselves so we can have the dialogue between, you know, you and you, the dialogue that lives within us. Instead of just listening to our subconscious or watching our thoughts, we actually can communicate. Let the conversation be two ways. Feel free to linger in this plow pose for as long as you'd like. Feel free to head to Shavasana when that moment speaks to you. Feel just a natural wave of the breath entering and exiting the body, knowing that you gave what you had to give and that's all that matters. You were here, you were present, you were willing, and you were kind. That kindness that you had for yourself, whether it was just for one moment during this practice or the entire time, is something to acknowledge, right? That kindness lives within you, it lives within all of us. Empathy lives within you, it lives within all of us. Know that there is a space for connection on those very simple levels with all the people that you encounter so take a moment to appreciate your capacity to connect with others through kindness, through empathy. And allow yourself to live with courage to share those things. As always, y'all, it's truly such a pleasure to share space with you here on YouTube. Thank you so much for being part of this community. I look forward to practicing with you again very soon. Have an amazing rest of your week. Peace.